Harry Styles knows how to carry clothing well. Whether you picture him circa 2014 wearing head-to-toe Saint Laurent, we're talking skinny jeans, Chelsea boots, bandanas, and tailored wool coats, or the head-to-toe Gucci look from the 2021 Met Gala, proves Styles has earned his surname for many years to come. That's because he knows what style is. Putting together a wardrobe around a bunch of basics and then adding some finishing touches. Harry style today can't really be labelled. It's quirky, it chops and changes, it's fun. You just don't know where he's going to go next. But there is this underlying sort of element of confidence which infuses everything that he puts on. His outfits never fail to inspire. Whether they're the velvet double-breasted suits or pastel-coloured flares to ruffled shirts. Harry Styles is the luckiest boy man on God's green planet. Um, when he was just 16, he came third in the X Factor talent competition. And the group that he was with, One Direction, went on to become the biggest boy band in the world, almost. And then, as if that wasn't enough, um, when they split up, he went on to become an even bigger solo pop star. And I think everybody in the universe knows who he is now. I don't think Harry Styles needs any tips from me about women. <laughs> You know, he's, he's, he's a magnet like I've never seen before. You know, it's, I've, I wasn't him when I was 18. That didn't happen to me. You know, um, he's, he's beguiling. And so are 1D, as, you know, completely all the boys are. <laughs> they're, they're, they're quite a power together, you know, in very much the same way that the Spice Girls were. The Spice Girls went and took on the world and, and won. And uh, I think the 1D boys have got a, a similar sort of chemistry. Uh, they're all good-looking lads. They're all really talented. They're all great singers. Uh, and as a five, they're a great power. And Harry, you know, he's he's been he's been tarred with the lucky stick, hasn't he? You know, he's he's he seems to be having a whale of a time. And I, I, I'll leave it at that. I think. If boy band style is all about coordinating colours and matching outfits, Harry Styles has never really paid attention. As his career hit the big time. The former One Direction member traded teen-friendly Jack Wills tracksuits for an enviable and expansive selection of Saint Laurent, Burberry, and most notably, Gucci. And what about in terms of uh, Burberry? I mean, it's a good job they make coats. We've had the lovely London weather yeah. coming down on well, us Yeah, it's just here. stopped, actually, so we got lucky, but, um, yeah, everyone likes a coat, don't they? Do you think they get you on the catwalk? I mean, you're an obvious choice, aren't you, really? Um, I'm, I don't know if I can walk in a straight line that well. I might, like, have fumble to around, so maybe not. But why do we have to walk in a straight line? It's so regimented, isn't it? This is well, maybe I'll zigzag. Yeah, we'll we'll switch it up a little bit. Yeah. 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 Maybe. OK, all right. Thank have you. Nice show, to see you. I think Harry was always the fashion-curious member of 1D, and so when they broke up, he didn't have to fit any mould anymore, so, you know, his, his wings spread, and he discovered Saint Laurent and Eddie Slimane. He started wearing floral suits and, you know, step by step, he sort of blossomed into this fashion icon, if you like. And so, you know, when Harry left 1D, he started wearing labels that, you know, real fashion cognoscenti acknowledged and kind of like noticed and remarked on. And, you know, all that helped his credibility. Long the most directional dresser of the fivesome, it was in early 2013, at the age of 19, that Harry began to break the mould. But the difference between style and fashion is quite interesting because when you talk about fashion, certainly when you talk about fashion theory, fashion lends itself to being in or out of fashion. So you can be fashionable or you can be unfashionable. And that kind of is people who kind of engage with trends maybe are fashionable. And people who are stylish are people who've got a sort of sense of themselves and wear clothes that maybe don't necessarily move with the seasons or with the trend cycle of fashion. And I think what's important is that, you know, people within the fashion world, designers, stylists, etc., they're always looking at people who've got style 
rather than who are fashionable because it's all about chasing um, something that's stylish rather than fashionable. Everybody can be fashionable, but few people can be really stylish. A printed Burberry shirt here, a skinny jean boots combination there, all enhanced by a scrapbook-esque collection of tattoos. His peers might have continued to sport boyish trainers, hoodies and leather jackets, but Harry honed his sartorial focus. One of the constants in Harry Styles' wardrobe is like when he was in One Direction, he really loved wearing sort of vintage band t-shirts and I think he still wears them today, still like seen out and about in, you know, really expensive ones that you can buy in vintage shops in LA that cost thousands and thousands of pounds, whereas I'm sure the ones that he wore when he was in One Direction cost you know, five pounds from Camden Market. So that seems to be a constant love of his life. But I think generally it's what's, what's remained constant is a curiosity about fashion and a genuine passion for it. And kind of always trying to find something new and interesting to wear. So that I think is a constant. As the year ended, Harry had collected a British fashion award for his personal style. What strikes me about Harry Styles' wardrobe is that it's a real, mirror on music fashion history so he will look you know his a lot of his the clothes that he wears are re refreshed reincarnations of outfits that some of our most you know some of the most revered rock and roll stars have worn whether it's mick jagger prince little richard kurt cobain bob dylan johnny cash you can see parallels with the clothes that he wears and the clothes that they also wore I think what's also really important and sort of takes things a step further with Harry Styles' wardrobe is that he has liberated people to some extent with his kind of inclusive sort of approach to wardrobe choices. He will pick something that's traditionally feminine or traditionally male and he'll wear it without sort of, you know, an either here nor there. That means that fashion isn't in a box and the conversations in fashion at the moment are all about not having fashion in a box and inclusivity and this sort of gender fluidity which he seems to platform spectacularly with his wardrobe. By the time One Direction took to the road in 2014 for the Where We Are tour, Harry was rarely seen without a piece of Hedy Slamas Saint Laurent. Harry styles his fashion sensors naturally develops and from when he was in 1D and he'd wear sweatshirts and uh, rock star, you know, t-shirts and then he kind of moved into that Eddie Slimane sort of skinny silhouette where he looked a bit like a, an extra from the Strokes or, um, you know, a sort of Chelsea hotel kind of kid. And then right up to sort of more recently where he's embraced Gucci and everything Alessandra Michele has to offer in the kind of velvet and feathers and sort of glitter sort of epoch, if you like. So, you know, you can kind of see a chronology that's quite clear, but it all feels quite natural looking back. Tuxedo jackets, printed shirts, the Wyatt boots and silk scarves all became regular features of his wardrobe, both on and off stage. Harry's fashion styling has sort of undergone sort of dramatic changes over the years. I mean, he was first in the public eye when he was 16, so it's inevitable that you're going to wear different clothes. But he's sort of changed from being a sort of nerdy, skatey sort of 16-year-old wearing beanies, van shoes, to being a quirky man wearing tank tops and slacks by Gucci and sort of nail varnish and I think that that's kind of quite interesting that sort of slight Wes Anderson nerdy sort of element to him has sort of stayed the same but along the way he's kind of cut and paste different sort of aspects like you know he went through a, a sort of you know Chelsea 1970s look when he was wearing Yves Saint Laurent by Eddie Slimane wearing skinny jeans and rock and roll sort of Chelsea boots and um, you know and today, you know, he can be found on the cover of, you know, Vogue magazine wearing a frilly ball gown. So I think you can clearly see his confidence has, has kind of expanded. But all the while, there just feels like a nice joyfulness to what he wears. 2017 marks the arrival of a Gucci-heavy aesthetic for the now 27-year-old. The thing about Harry is that he's a music icon and he's a fashion icon. So you've got people fans in both camps who are really fascinated with him and part of what he's all about are his clothes 
and I think people are curious about him because he has pioneered this sort of radical inclusivity that is slightly kind of new and interesting for a lot of people who don't work in fashion, who don't live in kind of urban, you know, urban sort of cities. You know, maybe maybe kind of haven't really considered the clothes that he wears as an option. So I think that people are interested in the clothes that Harry wears because. He's very confident, he's brave, he's creative, and people are kind of like, oh, well, where's that coming from? Oh, it's okay, you know, and I think that's, that's probably what makes people curious. Having cut his famous curls off for his Dunkirk role, Harry set off on the promo trail for his debut solo album with a confident approach to style that saw him introduce what is now his signature aesthetic. Uh, I think I'm very excited for people to see what he's done in the film because I think his acting is fantastic and everything I'd hoped it would be. Well, uh, there's no competing with this man, are you? Here he is. Tom, I think Harry Styles got here. Go on, Harry! Are you, I mean, it's a lot of pressure for him, isn't it? Are you all supporting him tonight? Absolutely, of course. We're all in it together. It's a team effort. And, uh, yeah, he was, he was just one of the lads on the set. He was no different. And that's how he wanted it to be. Well, I'm sure that is what he wanted yeah, to be. Of it Can is. you sum up your experience? Were you aware of the beat combo known as One Direction before Harry came on? I had heard of them, yeah. <laughs> One of the lads, though, Tom was just saying. Yeah, I mean, my interaction with him on film was limited because our stories were in different storylines, but, you know, you can see him in the film. He gives a great, a great, great performance. What was it like when you heard the boys releasing their music? Were you nervous about, about it for them, or were you in anticipation? No, what was it it's, like? It's exciting. It's great. It's so... It's so good that we're all um, releasing stuff at the same time, because like we're all releasing different stuff, and it's proven that there's there's room for us all. That's great. There's so much room for you all. It's yeah. all different. Yeah, it's so. I mean, Harry's flying around over an ocean, for God's sake. Yeah, honestly, yeah. <laughs> Loads of room for him up there. <laughs> <laughs> Are you looking forward to Dunkirk as well? Yeah, can't wait. The trailer looks insane. I love I love a good a good uh, old war movie like that. Anyway, so when you're mates in it, it's even better. Um, yeah, I think it's, uh, it feels a little different for sure. Um, in that you've done the thing already, so now this is the fun bit. Um, but yeah, I, I loved it and uh, I had a very good time. I feel very fortunate to have been a part of this film. So. Well, I was going to say, how honoured do you feel? I mean, it's such an important story, isn't it? Yeah, I, I think when I heard about you know Chris doing this movie, I was. Uh, I was kind of already excited to watch it, to be honest, so... Um, and, yeah, I, I think I just wanted to be involved and, and get into work with someone I'm such a massive fan of and, obviously, a story that's such an important piece of, of British history and, uh, you know, who we are um, is, is amazing. I, I feel privileged to, to have got to work on it. I think everyone felt like we were making, you know, something special, so we all wanted to kind of do the best we could on it. And you're a huge pop star. You're now venturing into movies. What next for Harry Styles? More movies? I don't know. I think I'm one and done. I'd do this one again. One I, I enjoy it. I might be one and done. If it goes well, I'll be I'll be one and done, maybe. Did you burst into song on the set? I don't think I did, no. Maybe just for morale a couple yeah. of times, but yeah. <laughs> And what do the 1B boys think of it? Will they come and watch? Yeah, they, they texted me today actually saying they're looking forward to seeing it. And uh, yeah, I think it's uh, I think people will enjoy it. I hope they like it, yeah. And your mum's here at the premiere. She is. Has she brought anyone from Holmes Chapel with her? Uh, my my mum's here with my sister. I think I was probably mum. So yeah, they're, they're, this will be the first time they've seen it. Sorry, I keep I'm knocking the thing. My mind. Uh, this will be the first time they've seen it, so they're looking forward to it. They will enjoy the film. Thank you so much. I think any time you get to be around people who you're a fan of and uh, obviously passionate about what they do it feels like a privilege so I think being around people like that like Finn said kind of cast crew and Chris mm. um, you just try and soak up as as much as you can and use it as a, a learning experience yeah I'm very proud to uh, you know it's a great thrill as a director to see potential in somebody who hasn't done something before and it's really fun when you get to raise some eyebrows with a piece of casting and people are like, well, what's that going to be? When you know in your own heart, you know, it's my job to, to see this potential. Uh, and I, I knew Harry was going to do a fantastic job. And I've been really excited for people to see uh, see him in the film. He does, he does a really remarkable job of projecting truth in a subtle way. And uh, I think he's a fantastic film actor. Think candy floss pink suits. Printed satin flares, stacked heels, and fistfuls of rings. Harry was praised by his fans for his willingness to blur gender boundaries.
few high-profile stars rival him in his taste for adventurous fashion. His fashion icon status was cemented in 2018 when Gucci announced that he would become the face of its tailoring campaign, a role co-hosting the Met Gala soon followed. When Harry co-chaired the Met Gala in 2019 with Alessandro Michele, it was based on Susan Sontag's um, very famous uh, group of essays called Notes on Camp. And he wore head-to-toe Gucci, transparent frilly blouse, high heels, little sort of matador pants, and a pearl earring. And his look wasn't really camp, though. I think, for me, camp is a bit more humorous, a bit more cartoony. Historically, camp has got sort of different subcultural connotations. I think that Harry at the Met Gala notes on camp actually look very, very chic, all in black. There was much anticipation surrounding Harry's next wardrobe evolution as he prepared for another world tour to promote his well-received sophomore album. Alas, Harry, like all of his peers, had to postpone the tour owing to the coronavirus pandemic. Instead, he delivered his most colorful music video to date, the joyful Watermelon Sugar. He followed it up with the transportive Golden, introducing the world to Liverpool designer Stephen Stokey Daly and a particularly famous pair of printed trousers. Big cast of you, though. Did you have, like, a WhatsApp group to all keep in touch? I don't have WhatsApp. He yeah. doesn't have WhatsApp, oh. no. Um, yeah, I chat, I chat with a few of the other boys on WhatsApp. <laughs> um, one of the things that... Um... Sounds like an old man, didn't I? That's a... <laughs> I chat with a few of the other boys on WhatsApp. <laughs> I believe it's the WhatsApp. <laughs> WhatsApp's young and hip. Not don't know why Harry's not on it. maybe more old man than... But you're so old man by doing that that you're retro and cool. You see. Oh, like I'm bringing it back. Yeah, bringing oh, it back nice. to not be right. into it. I'm good with that. Harry is obviously no stranger to virality, but I think the, the kind of most explosive viral moment in his career so far was in 2020, and he wore a J.W. Anderson sort of massive patchwork um, cardigan to the Today Show to do rehearsals in. And the look went into the internet. Everybody loved it. And it was at a time when people were still locked up and staying at home. And it translates, you know, there's one thing going viral and there's another thing going viral on TikTok. And this kind of turned in, this cardigan somehow mutated into a TikTok challenge where people at home picked up their knitting needles and started knitting squares to create this wonderful cardigan designed by J.W. Anderson. And then, of course, J.W. Anderson, who is an amazing designer and a wonderful person, put the pattern for the cardigan free up on his website. So it meant that even more people could, you know, see how easy it was to do. So it just went crazy and everybody was sort of making these cardigans and wearing them and it went round the world. And now, today, the v &A Museum in London has an example of this very famous viral cardigan in their permanent exhibition in their fashion galleries. Yeah. What does it feel like to know that at, you know, 5.30 in the morning or the night before, a crowd turns out like this to watch you sing a few songs? Um, I think, I mean, I've been, I feel very lucky that throughout my career so far, I've, I just keep being surprised by the dedication and support that I've, I've had. From. Thank you so much for continuing to surprise me, and I love you very much. Thank you. 2021 has already started on a sartorial high for Harry. He wore bedazzling Gucci to dance alongside Phoebe Waller-Bridge in his music video for the toe-tapping anthem, Treat People With Kindness. Then in March, he was back to his pre-pandemic ways of stealing headlines through his stylish choices and winning over new fans with his rousing onstage performance of Watermelon Sugar at the Grammys. Your 
getting washed away. Put that sugar sweet, you got what I need. Sipping on the potion, all that good emotion. Just my kind of keep, keep it on me, beep. Tested by the potion, love and this devotion. Harry collected his first ever statue from the Academy wearing a triptych of Gucci looks, each resplendent with its own faux fur boa draped over his tattooed décolletage. When Harry's on stage, he definitely likes to show off his chest, and I don't know what it is, but there often seems to be an outfit that bears his tattoos, and, you know, that seems to, you know, be something he enjoys, the fans enjoy. I don't know whether it's a, a crutch or something he feels comfortable with and, you know, just kind of falls into. But I think that on stage, certainly the kind of glitzier, the better. And so feather boas, frills, tassels, they all come into the ideal Harry Styles stage wardrobe, if you like. And um, I think that's one of the reasons why it's so interesting looking at the concerts that he puts on and the fans that go and see him because they often pick up on these elements and these accessories and, and they wear them well too. So it just becomes a real joyful Harry party. I think there's a certain sort of, you know, you talk about, you've spoken about the colors and the sort of bold graphicness to, to Harry's stage wardrobe. And I think that those are signature elements if you like. But I guess the point about fashion is, is that you do, or style is that, you know, we love Harry when he wears a fringed waistcoat on stage and it kind of like, you know, everyone screams. But you do want him to wear something else, so it's difficult to keep that momentum going, I think. So I think the good thing about Harry Styles' wardrobe is that he has embraced this Bowie-esque sort of chameleon appeal. And so it's always about, yeah, what's he going to be wearing next? With the release of his film Don't Worry Darling in 2022, it's likely it will usher in a new era in style for Styles, with his retro suiting owing to the period setting. Um, uh, I, I don't, I don't know really. I, I think, uh, yeah, I mean, I feel very lucky that I, I get to do something that I love as a job, and uh, I feel like being able to explore this uh, has made me feel even luckier that I get to do two things that I really enjoy. And um, in terms of the future, I, I try not to think ahead too much. I'm trying to just, you know, day, day at a time type thing. Um, I mean, I enjoy, I enjoy both. Um, I think, yeah, they're, um, you, you know, you kind of like, it, it's all, fun and art and it's really fun to kind of play in both worlds and see how they affect each other. Um, I think any time you kind of are inspired by something, you're supposed to follow it. Um, but I, I don't know, I guess I haven't really thought about it that much, if I'm honest, but that's a good film. Thank you. Um, I mean, personally, I find them to be kind of uh, opposite in, in a lot of ways, I think. Um, Making music is, is like a really personal thing. And uh, I, I think there's aspects of acting where you're obviously drawing from maybe experiences you've had and stuff. But I think for the most part, it, you know, you're pretending to play someone else. Um, I think that's kind of what is, what I find the most fun about it. It's, it's you know, playing pretend and just, uh, kind of exploring different things. I think they can aid each other in, in a way. I think any time you get to view the world through a different lens for a moment, it can help with like creativity, whichever way it goes. But um, yeah, I find them to be really different. I, I think, you know, I, I think the fun part is you never feel like you know what you're doing in either of them. Um, music, I've done it a little bit longer, so that feeling is a little more comfortable, but what I like about acting is I feel like I have no idea what I'm doing, and it's quite fun. So she's there. I mean, I think the thing about this film is it's on, 
fortunately very timely, but it's also timeless because this has, exact, has existed throughout history. Um, and I don't think there will unfortunately ever be a time when the idea of controlling um, someone's body is, is not something relevant to be able to fight against. I think we have to continue that conversation. So um, I hope it provokes conversations. I hope it makes people think and, and question the system that serves them. But, uh, you know, we also want this film to be incredibly entertaining. You know, um, Katie and I always say we believe in Trojan horse films, that on the outside we want it to be absolute entertainment. And in, if it allows you to... Oh, good. <laughs> I'm so happy. Uh, yeah, but the, yeah, the conversations we want to provoke, I mean, the film is intentionally provocative. We want to be disruptive. I believe in disruption as a, as a necessary tool in society. So when it comes to Harry Styles' wardrobe, you know, we're all living in the 21st century where social media is really important, the red carpet is really important. People's careers become an industry, if you like. And because he's such a fashion icon, you can, I think, occasionally, you know, you might question his fashion sort of manifestations, if you like. I don't think there's ever been one moment in Harry's career where I've looked at, at something that he's worn and thought, oh yeah, he's done that for, for the jokes, for the, for the headlines or to promote something. I think his wardrobe choices are too sort of weird for people to think, you know, this is going to be a money spinner. What's happened is he wears kind of like a frog bucket hat or a pair of fishnet stockings or a tank top from Gucci that looks really kind of like something your, you know, favourite uncle in the 1970s would have worn. And people are surprised by it. They're not, I, I think then, then they have to look twice and then they come back and then they decide they like Harry, so they like the outfit. I don't think there's been a sort of obvious sellout. Harry Styles was unveiled as the first solo male cover star of US Vogue in December 2020, in a dress to boot. He wore a voluminous periwinkle blue-colored gown and paired it with a black tuxedo jacket designed by Gucci's Alessandro Michele. So when Harry was featured on the cover of American Vogue in 2020 wearing a Gucci frilly ball gown. Obviously, he wasn't the first man to ever wear a dress, but I think what's interesting is that he was the first guy on the cover of the magazine, first femboy, if you like, but also he brought that look to a mainstream that might not have been aware of subcultural, the background of, you know, men wearing dresses, or challenges to sort of gender, gender stereotypes. I think for a lot of people, it was genuinely quite interesting and new. Obviously, for a lot of people who, who work in fashion or know about these things, it, it, you know, it might have been even a little bit irritating. You know, how come he's getting all this publicity? But I think for the very reason that it was Harry, you know, this charming pop star who the world loved, it helped break down maybe some barriers that were still existing. No doubt the Harry Styles Vogue dress turned many heads. This unusual outfit sparked many discussions on gender-specific dressing and fashion choices. Harry's wardrobe challenges heteronormative stereotypes, and I think what defines it the most is a certain sense of bravery and confidence with what he wears. There was a great interview in The Guardian where he says, oh, you know, sometimes, you know, the coolest things are not the cool things. I think that's a real sort of moment of clarity. You sort of, he can take things which are outside the realm of fashion and kind of make them interesting, and people love that. Undoubtedly, Harry took this step to break gender norms. Harry's got a non-binary approach to wearing clothes. It's very fluid and it's very inclusive, so there doesn't seem to be any kind of piece of clothing that he wouldn't wear. Probably the most famous example of that is when he started wearing pearl necklaces and you know took something that really I guess is quite an old-fashioned quite dated sort of staid accessory from a you know traditionally you know 1950s maiden aunt sort of wardrobe and started wearing it very casually and in a very pop and rock and roll way 
And I think that's a, a really good example of how he can kind of translate something that's, that's very significantly, you know, one thing or another, i.e., you know, feminine. And, and, and just kind of where it says that everybody can. This cover received a lot of praise, but criticism wasn't too far away. I think that Harry's confidence, joy, happiness and, you know, palpable love of dressing up makes it very hard for people to criticise him. And when they do, it's just kind of like water off a duck's back, you know. I think that's part of his appeal. Um, I, I, think, uh, I think your community is, is kind of whatever you make it, I think. Um, I think if you, you know, if you kind of... I, I think with community, the, the most important thing is to kind of start at what a real community is, so family, friends, um, kind of people that you are surrounding your life with. Um, I think that's probably more in, more important in terms of what really kind of affects your day-to-day -day life um, you know, rather than social media. I, I think there are, look, there's, there's a lot of uh, negative sides of social media. Obviously, they're, they're pretty obvious for everyone to see, but I think that, you know, it's always important to remember there's, there are positive things happening because of it in the world as well. Um, but it's, uh, yeah, I think, I mean, I think community is everything. I, I think, you know, family, it's the family that you choose, whether that be your friends or, you know, whoever you kind of surround yourself with. I, I think this film is a, is a really good example of kind of trusting. I think you have to kind of trust your gut with that stuff. Um, and I think, yeah, you can, you know, you can fall in, you can have a path with the right group of people and a very different path if you've fallen with the wrong people. Many people felt that the dress symbolized a less masculine man, while some, including people from the LGBTQ society, loved the initiative. Many said that the cover highlights the history of fashion. So in 2018, on the Treat People With Kindness tour, Harry designed a t-shirt which was sold in aid of LGBTQ plus charities for teenagers. And I think that was a really important statement. He flies the rainbow flag proudly. He's not ashamed to come forward and promote the cause. He said on stage, you know, I love everybody, whether you're black, white, trans, gay, straight, I love you all. And I think for that reason, his fans love him equally back. Nine men have featured on the cover previously, but always as part of a couple. They include Kanye West, Justin Bieber, and Styles' former bandmate, Zayn Malik. Styles, who was also photographed for the magazine in a Comme des Garçons kilt, a Wales bonnet knitted skirt, and a Victorian era crinoline, is a trailblazer of gender neutral dressing, as championed by labels such as Art School, Nocesso, and Harris Reed, a collaborator of Styles'. So my favourite Harry Styles outfit is a Marc Jacobs sunflower yellow pantsuit that was in Marc Jacobs' 2020 spring summer collection. And Harry Styles wore it to the Brits. And he wore it exactly as it walked on the catwalk with a sort of purple chiffon scarf tied in a beautiful bow. It was actually a look that Lady Gaga wore on the cover of Elle magazine as well. So it's a bit of a pop star favourite, but I really love the fact that Harry chose something from the women's wear collection and made it his own and strode out on, you know, kind of a big mainstream stage such as the Brits and showed everybody, you know, how wonderful a purple bow can look with a yellow pantsuit. It's Harry's house. We just live in it. Actually, so does Gucci. Harry Styles is fully absorbed in the double G lifestyle, and his Love on Tour 2022 shows have been as much Gucci runways as they are concerts. While on tour for his new record, Styles has been living up to the promise of his last name, wearing a series of extremely stylish Gucci looks custom designed for the singer by Gucci creative director Alessandro Michele. So Harry works obviously hand in hand with the stylist Harry Lambert and also a lot with the designer Harris Reed. 
And I think that, you know, between them all, they sort of conjure up this magic that is Harry's wardrobe. And when you're a massive pop star, you can't go around doing your shopping all the time on your, on your own. So I think that's a sort of, you know, framework that most stars in the public eye have. But I think there is a real sort of intrigue and dedication to what Harry does put on for all those special moments. And I think it's very much a sort of symbiotic relationship. But also, I mean, recently Harry did a collaboration with Alessandra Michele at Gucci and created a capsule collection, the two of them, called Ha Ha Ha. I think Alessandra Michele said it was going to be a, a really personal wardrobe for Harry. And I don't think you can go into something like that, which is really high profile and also right in the glare of properly sort of sort of critical fashion world people, if you like, who you know what's what, and kind of go into something like that with really having an eye on what it is you like. And anyway, the, the you know the collection was wonderful. It's it's kind of fun, pretty, quirky, colourful, and a real um, reflection, I think, of what Harry's about. The vibe is retro and loud, with lots of prints, flare trousers, ultra neon colours, sequins, overalls, and Adidas X Gucci goodness, including several collaborative gazelles in new colourways. What's interesting, I think, about Harry Styles' wardrobe is that he can pick up on, you know, a fairly outdated silhouette and refresh it, and suddenly it becomes kind of new and interesting again. So, you know, you might think about men in flares, for example, or men wearing florals, or men wearing feather boas, or something, or tank tops. The reason why people are interested in Harry Styles and sort of the clothes that he's kind of platforming uh, wherever he goes, on stage or out and about, is that he's quite unafraid of where his fashion sort of references lie. So he can pick up something that's unfashionable and kind of reinvent it. But I mean, that's also one of the keys to anybody who's interested in fashion. You know, now the cycle of fashion runs so quickly. One night, Styles is clad in an ultra-tight heart-printed t-shirt. The next, he's got on checkerboard pants that billow out over his Adidas X Gucci sneakers. There's intentionally no singular theme uniting all the outfits, beside them all being exquisitely bold and proportionally consistent, with tucked-in t-shirts and cropped jackets shortening Styles' torso as his flow pants lengthen those famous legs. Harry Styles' accessories show off a real connoisseurship of fashion. So when he worked with Gucci, when they kind of relaunched some of their kind of most iconic bags, he sort of chose the Jackie, which is you know one of the most wonderful Gucci bags you might ever come across and, and decided that was his bag, that was his man bag. So I think Harry's accessories are both idiosyncratic and smart. You know, whether he's wearing a smiley face manicure or a, you know, a designer pearl necklace or a Gucci bag, they all reflect this sort of expertise and roving eye of knowledge when it comes to fashion that's really on point. I think it shows that, you know, every detail counts when it comes to Harry's sort of wardrobe. And that's a kind of, that kind of thoughtful approach to clothes and what he wears sort of shows real dedication, I think, yeah. I think sunglasses are obviously a really important accessory, especially if you're in LA under the bright, you know, sunshine there. But, I mean, when you look at fashion history or music fashion history, every rock and roll style icon has worn sunglasses well, from Elton John with his massive sort of Diamante shades through to Bono with his wraparound ones, through to, you know, all sorts of pioneers, you know, the Rolling Stones, the Beatles. It's a, it's a signature rock and roll look. So when Harry puts them on, it's, you know, it feels right. Styles who's made headlines by wearing Molly Goddard and J.W. Anderson in recent months, is nothing if not devoted to Gucci. Harry is very much a poster boy for Gucci. You know, there is no doubt about that. And he's got a very strong relationship with Alessandra Michele, who's sort of said publicly, you know, that he's like a Greek god and, you know, one of his muses, if you like. But, you know, apart from a few times when there's been a sort of, you know, signed, sealed and delivered, contract to exclusively wear Gucci on tour. He wears lots of different designers and I think that's what's really interesting. 
even, you know, a few years ago when he first came across Harris Reed and started wearing his clothes, you know, that he, he doesn't seem bound by one designer and, you know, he wears clothes a lot by Gucci. I think they are compatible with the person that he is. Alessandra Michele's signature styling at, at Gucci is quirky, idiosyncratic, uh, a bit left field, a bit wet Wes Anderson, you know, which all really fits Harry's sort of psyche. But I've seen him wear some of the most surprising designers, like Molly Goddard, for example, who you would not have, you know, most people think of Molly Goddard and they think of uh, Villanelle from, from Killing Eve, yeah, exactly, you know, Villanelle wearing a Molly Goddard dress, but, you know, he's worn some of her simpler pieces. Uh, Harry Styles is certainly one to watch if you're interested in upcoming designers or what's coming next. He's got a real roving eye that, that isn't exclusively bound by Gucci, but of course, you know, that is one of the biggest names in his wardrobe. He's appeared in plenty of Gucci campaigns, which is probably how he originally got in touch with Michele. Over the years, Styles has morphed from a floppy-haired pop waif into a primo soft boy influencer. Stylist Harry Lambert has been on hand to provide the singer with his head-turning performance looks. For his stint at Capital FM's Summertime Ball, Styles' first solo performance there since he played with One Direction at the event in 2015, Harry wore a retro all-in-one by Palomo Spain. The new age rocker lit up Wembley Stadium in the black and white look, which he wore unbuttoned to reveal his chest tattoos. When Chanel, you know, brought black into the lexicon of fashionability in the 1920s, it immediately became a kind of chic colour for women to wear. And I think for men, it's equally chic, it's, but it's also a little bit radical. So when you think about the people, you know, spring to mind who wear black on black really well, like, for example, Johnny Cash, you know, this radical kind of outlaw of country and Western rock and roll, it's just very smart. And so when Harry puts it on, it, it's some of those codes kind of transfer, if you like. Some might say the style is reminiscent of the looks worn by David Bowie throughout his glittering career. Bowie was known for his individual performance style and striking all-in-ones featured heavily in his wardrobe. David Bowie is obviously one of Harry Styles' main influences and key icons to reference. And that shouldn't be surprising because, you know, David Bowie sort of trailblazed a number of non-binary personalities. In fact, David Bowie sort of famously said that he collected personalities. And in a way, you can see how this translates to Harry's wardrobe and the sort of different personas that he exhibits when he's out and about, when he's on tour, you know, at different moments in time. So with David Bowie, you had this kind of chameleon-esque sort of superstar pop character. And for many people, um, that's exactly what Harry Styles is for the 21st century. I think any time you're around people you're a fan of, you just try and kind of soak up as much of that as possible. And just watching them work is, is kind of a privilege. Um, yeah, I mean, there's so many amazing people on kind of working on this film from, from people in the cast and people who are working on the crew and obviously Chris. It's uh, it was pretty like you just loved being around everyone and getting to watch them work was, was pretty amazing. Harry has previously noted Bowie's influence on his music, and some of his other looks seem to have nodded to the music legend too. Well, like David Bowie, Harry Styles sort of morphs and sort of regenerates with his wardrobe, if you like, each time sort of turning into something new and special. People often comment on how visually Harry Styles looks a bit like a young Mick Jagger, and there is no doubt that he does, especially when his hair's a bit longer. I think the thing about Mick Jagger is that he was, you know, a real dandy. 
He was gender fluid before gender fluid became a thing. He chopped and changed and mixed and matched, you know, women's cl clothes, velvets and frills. And so when you look at some of Mick Jagger's sort of archive wardrobe, you can see real parallels with some of the clothes that Harry wears. So, for example, when he was inaugurated into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, and he famously sort of strode on stage with Stevie Nicks, and he was wearing this kind of peacock blue velvet suit. It was almost identical to something that Mick Jagger might have worn in the 60s. And I find that quite fascinating, that it goes back to the question of style and fashion. You know, real style endures, as you know, Yves Saint Laurent said. Something looks good, it always kind of looks good. And I think Harry taps into that quite a lot with the wardrobe choices that he makes. Sometimes he can look like, you know, bohemian Mick Jagger. Other times he can look like a 1950s Elvis and changes his hair and quiffs it and wears a sort of 1950s bluff pocket shirt or a red suit or something that's really reminiscent of some of Elvis's key styles. Or you might see him in a purple paisley sort of brocade suit. And of course, you know, people of a certain age will immediately kind of be transported back to the Prince era when, you know, obviously he was the Prince of Paisley. Bob Dylan, for example, there's a sort of great outfit that Harry wore um, with a little fisherman's hat and a sort of brown sort of, boat, you know, beatnik sweat sweater. It's in exact same as on, you know, one of Bob Dylan's album covers. Even someone like Kurt Cobain, you know, wearing sort of frilly dresses. There are the huge reminiscences to Harry's wardrobe when he wears a frock or a frill or even a pearl necklace, for example. Mr. Harry Styles, of course, in this as well. Have you got used to the streams everywhere you go when he's around? It's extraordinary. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty mental. I don't think I'll ever get used to that. I don't know how he does it. Yeah. Well, we'll miss him tonight. Yeah, and we, we will. We wish him luck um, yeah. on stage tonight in the States. Yeah, we'll miss him. Outside any given Harry Styles concert, you'll see a smattering of feathers and sequins leading towards the venue. At the end of this flamboyant trail, you'll find thousands of fans decked out in outfits, drawing inspiration from or paying homage to the superstar. I think the way that Harry wears his clothes has encouraged everybody to express a little bit more of their personality. I think that Harry Styles has made flamboyancy a fashion trend and encouraged people the world over in the most disparate of places to just try something new on for size. What's interesting about and important I think about the clothes that Harry Styles wears is that you know he encourages a sort of open perspective on who you can be and that's more important than ever today in a world where inclusivity and diversity is really key. I think that he has made people look at clothes and life and culture a little bit differently. He's really powerful. I mean, he's such a global influence. If he puts on a pearl necklace, then other people think, hey, you know what, that's not kind of so weird and strange. I can do that as well. To some, months of planning and endless nights spent glue-gunning rhinestones to Lycra flares just for a two-hour event might seem pointless. But for Harry's fans, there is a genuine joy and camaraderie in prepping for one of his shows. I think one of the most interesting things that I've seen at Harry Styles concerts are the fans. I love what the fans wear. And you can see almost an entire landscape of Harry's wardrobe from start to finish, you know. So, you know, some of the fans might be wearing a feather boa from his feather boa moment in time, or they might be wearing pearls, or they might be wearing sort of floral suits. And, you know, you've got this real sense of engagement with his wardrobe. And there is nothing kind of more amazing than seeing, you know, thousands of people dressed up and having fun and looking just a little bit like Harry. Concert fashion is typically characterized by artist merchandise, but this trend signals a shift towards curated concert looks, 
akin to the flower crowns and facial glitter seen at the height of festival fashion. For many fans, going to a concert is a similar experience and often an all-day affair. So after COVID and people started kind of moving into the real world again, Harry's concert in 2021 at Madison Square Gardens was a real touchstone for Harry fans and he didn't disappoint when it came to the clothes that he wore. So he dressed up as Piero in a clown suit and sang wearing that, which was really fun, but also very gorgeous and glamorous. Um, but my favorite outfit was him uh, when he wore the Judy Garland Wizard of Oz, Toto basket and gingham dress and ruby red slippers, all designed by Gucci, we might add. Um, so I think that was, that was really special. And it just brought people a real joyful sense of celebration of being out and about and dressing up again and not giving two hoots about what you're gonna wear. So Harry's wardrobe, when he's on stage and off, you know, there is, a, there is a sort of similarity sometimes to the clothes he wears off stage and on stage, but certainly on his Love On Tour wardrobe, the clothes that he's wearing, the majority by Gucci, for me, they are, they've, they've kind of sort of moved into slight sort of children's presenter mode, sort of lots of block colours, lots of bold graphic shapes, you know, sort of the odd sort of pantsuit and, and just very sort of um, cartoony almost. Very simple, but very bold and graphic, you know, with all the kind of colours. With many Styles fans camping outside venues overnight to ensure they get the best possible view, effectively creating their own festival-esque experience, dressing up adds an extra bit of excitement and distracts from the reality that they've pitched their tents on the concrete pavements of Wembley as opposed to the grassy fields of Glastonbury. Harry's legacy is going to be a load of great pop tunes and also a legacy that it's okay to have fun with your wardrobe and having a confidence to go out and have fun with your wardrobe. He's become a global fashion icon and a huge influence in, in the cultural world as well. I think his confidence is really catching and I think that's what he's going to be remembered for. Alongside his music, Harry Styles' sense of style has evolved over the years and seemingly both just keep getting better. After much anticipation, the singer released his first solo album, featuring his first hit single, Sign of the Times, which touches upon the musical styles of both Queen and David Bowie, a far cry from his teeny bopper One Direction days. Then came the Stevie Nicks-approved Fine Line, which really solidified just how grown up the musician has become. I think any time you get to be around people who you're a fan of and uh, obviously passionate about what they do, it feels like a privilege. So I think being around people like that, like Finn said, kind of cast, crew and Chris, mm. um, you just try and soak up as, as much as you can and use it as a, a learning experience. Yeah. He's a music history sort of book in some respects and you can take it on face value, you know, him as he is now but you can also sort of dig a bit deeper and sort of say yeah you know he's referencing all these gods of music and i'm sure he's aware of that throughout it all styles as taste in clothing has matured as well while he started off his fame journey in matching suits with his one direction bandmates the singer's current style is clearly all his own Never one to stick to a traditional shirt and pants, Styles has come to be known for his affinity of high-waisted trousers, chunky necklaces, and sparkly boots. And thanks to his close relationship with Gucci's Alessandro Michele, he never has to worry about running out of any of those.